East Africa's ferry opportunities and challenges are beginning to attract attention, as evidenced by this year's student design competition and last year's presentation of an idealised ferry concept for Kenya's small corner of Lake Victoria. The Kenyan government's recognition of the role that water transport can play in the development of the region has resulted in increased resources being allocated to enforcing marine regulations. Consequently, the Kenya Maritime Authority and the Kenyan Coast Guard are now better able to monitor and control lake transport activities. Their active on-water presence has improved the safety of water transport in the lake by regularly checking that the traditional wooden passenger canoes at least carry buoyancy vests and by ensuring that the two fer formal ferry operators, Globology Limited and one other, comply with Kenyan marine regulations. And the enforcement of the basic safety requirements for all types of vessels also means that formal ferry operators can invest in a reasonably level playing field, although policing the hundreds of informal canoe operators is an ongoing challenge for the authorities. While there's no doubt that there is a desperate need for safe, modern ferry services in East Africa, the reality of providing such services is an ongoing challenge for reasons which will become obvious. Globology's water buses were conceived as an appropriate solution to the transportation needs of East Africa's inland and coastal islands. People living on these islands rely mainly on unsafe, unregulated and overloaded vessels, ranging from traditional wooden canoes to conventional ferries from the developed world, which are no longer fit for purpose and are sold for peanuts to unscrupulous ferry operators around the less developed world. Selling a pile of floating scrap as a working vessel is unethical, but better for the original owner than paying the shipbreaking cost. The market segment we operate in is rural water transport. And transport is an essential precursor to achieving most of the sustainable development goals. We operate like a rural bus company, giving people access to education, healthcare, markets, government and other services and employment. And we carry just about everything imported to the islands and exported from them. Sofa sets, cows, cement, fish, shop goods, ice, drinks, pigs, water tanks, motorbikes, solar panels, etc. Since most islands in the region have minimal or no road networks, our vessels are designed to carry passengers and cargo only. Our water buses are home ported at the furthest landing sites from the mainland because our service is principally taking islanders to the mainland to conduct their business and then bringing them back home. Operating in the rural areas of the less developed world means that while being ethically bound to providing a first-class service in terms of reliability, safety, compliance and environmental impact, we can only charge third-class ticket prices. Unless we want to exclude the majority of the island populations because they cannot even afford what would be an uneconomically cheap ticket in North America and Europe. Since over 80% of the 40,000 passengers we carry every month earn $3.50 a day or less, we operate in a very elastic market. Our passengers have to make a serious decision about every cent they spend. And while the comfort, safety and speed we offer has value, the premium poor people are willing to pay is only marginally higher than the fares charged by the traditional canoes, which are our main competitors. The challenge, therefore, for a commercial operator in the less developed world is creating a business model which works without subsidy, while still being affordable by the people who need to travel. Since Globology was formed in 20, 2005, there have been several attempts to introduce mass water transport services, to the 6% of Lake Victoria, which belongs to Kenya. But none of these have succeeded. The business models were flawed as a consequence of inadequate market research, which did not consider the ability of people to pay for a sophisticated high capital cost service, and nor did it indicate that the routes operated in the Wynnum Gulf, like the one proposed at last year's conference and the one chosen for this year's student design competition, are only possible for six months of the year, due to the movement patterns of water hyacinths, which blocks the ports in the Gulf. A company reliant on a low margin, high volume business model cannot survive in a route which only works for half the year because the ports are not accessible for the other half. 
The poverty of our passengers and the imported aquatic weed are not the only challenges faced in Globology's first market, Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria is the world's second largest lake and one of the shallowest, with a maximum depth of 80 metres and an average depth of 40 metres. Compounding the shallowness of the lake is a fluctuating lake level. Over the last four years, the water level in the lake has risen to its highest level ever. The level has increased by over one metre vertically and 20 metres horizontally, which indicates the need to invest heavily in landing facilities if conventional ferries or landing craft type vessels are to be used. Designing an appropriate solution for the transportation needs of Lake Victoria's island communities requires that not only is a physical operating environment taken into consideration, but the socio-economic status of the target mar market and existing travel patterns are also fed into the design spiral. So what are the principal design criteria? Safety is number one. This is the ability to survive intimate contact with rocks and 40 knot winds with wave heights of two meters. We ensure passive safety with aluminium hulls and five watertight compartments in each, which enables our water buses to meet the MSC high-speed craft rules for damage stability. Active safety comes from the widely spaced propellers, which result in a highly maneuverable vessel able to avoid obstacles and get on and off the beach even in winds up to Beaufort 6-7. Number two is fuel efficiency. We need to keep operating costs low to attract as many passengers as possible while still profitably operating the route. For fuel efficiency, we've chosen a catamaran with slender hulls and lightweight construction, which results in an easily driven vessel capable of carrying 132 passengers while only consuming 20 litres per hour of diesel at 12 knots. And because of the efficiency of our water buses, we only emit a fraction of the greenhouse gases and pollution dumped into the environment by the worn out two stroke outboard engines used by the canoes. Thirdly is low construction costs. We're aiming for a return on investment that will attract impact investors by offering a reasonable payback time. So we use aluminium for the hulls and a composite for the bridge deck. The hulls are imported in two pieces and welded together on site while the rest of the structure is manufactured in Kenya from imported raw materials. By globally sourcing for the hulls and building the bridge deck locally, we can produce a vessel tailored to our particular requirements in a fraction of the time and cost of an imported ferry. Finally, reliability. This is ensuring that the vessel and its equipment have minimal breakdowns and are able to survive operator abuse. Our vessels are therefore ruggedly built and we choose simple equipment and systems and avoid electronic controls. The end product of this process is therefore a fit for purpose vessel with seats that are comfortable for a three hour trip, protection from the sun and rain, filtered drinking water, toilets, secure dry storage of personal and commercial goods, and a separate cabin which functions as a sick bay, prisoner transport, meeting room, office, and a berthing room. So far, the maternity facility has been used twice, with two healthy babies having been born on our ferries. Our ferries can also be upgraded with air conditioning, hot water, padded seats, sound insulation, and carpets for tourism or middle class operations. While our existing vessels may be basic, the 1.8 million passengers we've carried are appreciative of both the service we provide and the positive impact it has had on their livelihoods and well-being. So, we have an appropriate transportation solution for the base of the pyramid communities who live on East Africa's islands, but do we have a business? The answer is almost. Our routes are all profitable, the company is cash flow positive, our overheads are lean, and we have a committed cross-functional management team. But we will not be a profitable company until we scale up our fleet, and this requires external investment. We already run four water buses and have started construction of another four which are destined for Uganda and Tanzania. Depending on how the corona epidemic develops, all four of the new vessels should be operational by mid-2021. And on our current roar-out, 
rollout schedule, we expect profitability by 2022. We will then be able to claim that it is possible to provide a safe, compliant and fully insured ferry service without subsidies.